My name is Larry Kynard. I'm from Mansfield, Texas. I belong to Chapter 215, Walton H. Walker Chapter. Mm -hmm. It was formed in the year 2000. And my role as far as the Tele-America program is I'm chairman of the National Tele-America program. I'm also a member of our local chapter, Tele-America group. And as we do in the local chapters, we try to get, uh, make opportunities to go into the schools and talk to them about the Korean War. Because as you mentioned in the beginning, we need to tell the students in all of our schools in the country that freedom is not free. Someone paid the price for the freedoms we enjoy today. And that's the primary purpose of the Tele-America program is to make sure our younger people know, number one, that there was a Korean War because all they've heard is it's a forgotten war. But it really was not a forgotten war, it's a forgotten victory. So what we do is work with the, with the schools, encourage the chapters to do the same. Today we have 237 chapters in the National KWVA. And through the efforts of working with the chapters to really find out who has Tele-America programs, 106 of those have active Tele-America programs. I'm extremely proud of that. Part of the problem is as the chapters get older and the veterans get older, they don't feel like they can go out and put on programs like this. Some of them find it hard to talk to an audience, to talk to students, but all they have to do is go and tell about their experiences and tell them what they did when they were in Korea. My big concern is that we're going to go into the future. Most of us that are living now are in our 80s. We have if we're in good health, maybe another five to ten years to live. After that, our stories will be gone. So what I think we need to do, and I feel like it's a, an obligation for all Korean veterans to do what they can to tell the story about the Korean War. Not only to the students, although I think that should be our primary target so they understand what it takes to maintain the freedoms we have, but take any opportunity you have to talk to civic groups, go to churches, go to organizations who have various programs that are going on. Make yourself available to tell about the Korean War and tell what we did when we were there. <coughs> Most of us were very young at the time, 17 to 22 or 3 years old. We didn't really know where we were going or what we were going to do. Because we were the generation after World War II, we did what we were asked. And I think we all felt a duty to the country and we'd do what was necessary to preserve the freedoms. When Korea had a problem and the U.S. committed to protect the Koreans, it was our job to go and, and make that real. That's an excellent summary of the Tele-America program. Thank you very much, Larry. Unfortunately, we haven't had one Tele-America program this year. We have had in the past. Uh, we don't have people who served in Korea, enough people to tell the story. Oh, by the way, you from chapter what? Chapter 186. St. Charles County, Missouri. Missouri, yes. CID 186. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that only one out of ten people are in the infantry or infantry oriented, you know, the rest are support people. And they they can tell what they've done, but they can't tell what happened in Korea because they weren't there, most of them. So what they tell us in Missouri, in some places, now not all places, because Jim's in Missouri, and they do a lot of Tele-America programs, 
but they cover a much bigger area than we do. But what we hear is they don't have the time. Well, it does take 55 minutes for two classes to come in and hear a program. Uh, but that's because of the Telemerica program. Uh, that program has dropped the scores in every school. And of course, lower schools mean less money. And they've got to get back up. They're all needing money. So they want those scores brought back up so, so they can get more aid. Mm -hmm. James Fountain from Florissant, Missouri, Chapter 4. And uh, we do a lot of Telemerica programs in schools, churches, rest homes, anybody will listen to us. And we've been doing rather well. Uh, we tried a new format recently, more like one-on-one -on -one with the students. We have one veteran talking to four students for 15 minutes. After that 15 minute period, the four students move to the next table. And here's something different from another veteran. And we're there all day long. We go from 8 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. We stay all day. Different curriculum, different contents both. They tell about their experience. So I give them my experience. They go to the next table. It might be an Air Force man. Mm. Could be a Marine. He talks to them for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, they've talked to all 20 veterans. They've got an idea of what a Marine does, what an infantryman does, what an Air Force man does, which prior to this, they didn't have any idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds excellent. And I like to explain to them that I'm in the infantry. There's 10 people behind me mm -hmm. helping me. You've got the Air Force, you got the Marines, you got the Navy, everybody. When you're on the ground fighting, there's 10 people that's assisting you and backing you up with food, drink, ammunition, whatever you need. The State Board of Education has put tremendous pressure on the teachers to raise their uh, grade levels, just like Frank was talking about a while ago. All the local schools are very concerned about the money that the state provides them and the scores that the students make. So what they've gone overboard, really, in trying to make sure they have the right classes, science, math, English, all those things that they have to pass a test on. Mm -hmm. They don't ask them about the Korean War, so that's just kind of a side issue. Probably uh, five years ago, we were going to 20 schools in the Arlington-Fort Worth area. The schools welcomed us to come in. Now we're lucky if we're able to go to one school. And it's all because the teachers have called us and said, we don't have time. What we've also found is where the teachers either have parents that were in the military, several of them had fathers, grandfathers that were in the Korean War, and they welcome us. We have a much easier time getting in those schools, but unless the teacher or the principal of the school have some connection with military in the past, you're not very well accepted. Though so you were asking about how I work with the chapters, my primary focus is to try to get materials, books, posters, whatever I can find available to pass on to the chapters. And we've been very fortunate to have enough material left over wonderful posters that are still very timely, work very well covering the Korean War, that were left over from the 50th anniversary. We had good support from the government at that point. They printed hundreds of posters and books and brochures and all of those that were left over were sent to me. I keep those in my garage at home. So when a new chapter starts with a Tell America program, I send out a standard package to them of posters and books and brochures, whatever I have, and encourage them to, to go forward with their program. 
normally I'll call them on the telephone, talk to them about what they're doing, give them some ideas, and basically what happens from there, it's their baby to find the best program that works for their schools. And what Jim was talking about of having the rotation between the tables is something that a lot of the schools do. We have one that uh, in Dallas that we go to that does the same thing. The students come in a large cafeteria with a number of tables set, set up so you can have a, an army guy here, a navy guy there, an air force guy here. The students have a chance one-on-one -on -one to ask questions and find out what they want to know. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful way to do it. And I've told a lot of chapters about that, and I think it works very well. The problems that we're having now is we are out of a lot of the material that I've been sending out over the past few years. But now, in working with the 60th anniversary commemorative committee, they have agreed to reprint a lot of these posters. Is that Korean government or American government? Well, some of it is supplied by the Korean government. The uh, embassy in South Korea has provided us now about with about 12,000 small pink books titled Korean War Education for Students. And we're now providing those to the Tell America chapter so they can take those books into the schools and leave them with students if we have enough or with the teachers to put in their libraries. What are the uh, textbooks that American government is providing to you about Korean War? Uh, we have no textbook, but we do have a small booklet that was written by a Korean veteran named Jack Walker. Jack wrote this book, it's called A Brief, Re Brief Outline of the Korean War. It's a wonderful book. He's been, it's been endorsed by several notable people, but Jack is getting older now, so he's not able to print additional books, though he was selling those. I have asked the DOD 60th Anniversary Committee if they would print those booklets for us and with a small royalty to Jack Walker they have agreed to do that. In the near future I'm hoping to have 25,000 of those books that I'm going to send to Tell America chapters and have available in enough quantity that they can hand out to the teachers and we can use them in a number of places for people to have a good understanding of what the Korean War was about. I would like to have a pamphlet consisting of three 8 by 11 pages from the Korean government explaining what took place and when it took place, what happened after, so we can give that to the teacher or the teachers prior to us going out and giving our telemetry program. Because most of the teachers don't know a thing about the Korean War unless their father was there or grandfather. But the majority of them, they're just like the students. When we leave there, the teacher's going to question the children. That would help them with their questions. And we have had two programs for them. And one of the first questions I ask them is, how many of you taught anything about the Korean War? Not a one. There, there was nothing that they could teach. There were no books available. They didn't know anything about the Korean War, so they couldn't teach anything about the Korean War. So that's, uh, that's uh, unless maybe the younger teachers uh, have some training in that, and I hope they do, but the older teachers, there's nothing there. I, I think for the Tell America program, your best audience is going to be seventh or eighth grade above. Mm -hmm. up through high school. The younger ones don't really understand what you're talking about, but those in that age group pretty well understand what it's all about and generally are very eager and answer, ask good questions. When you go into a school, at least in, in the Texas schools, most of the classes are about 55 minutes long. They have that 
length of class, then they change classes and go to the next one. So our typical day would be to have maybe seven or eight classes of different students during the daytime. So you're blocked in to about 55 minutes to talk about what you came to tell them. <clears throat> so we have a program pretty well worked out that we start with a DVD, an 11 minute overview of the Korean War that we picked up from the 50th anniversary material and it works very well. And we have those DVDs available for the Tel-America chapters. It gives a wonderful overview of why we went into Korea, what happened there, what the result was, and it ends and goes all the way through by saying freedom is not free. We stop communism, and that's the big message, and it works out very nicely. We tend to get a little fun out of our program. It's not all rah, rah, rah. Mm -hmm. We put a little fun in it. I think that helps a lot. Could uh, you give me an example of how you were, how you're having fun? Well, a question and answer period. Someone will say, well, where'd you go to the bathroom at? Well, where would you go to the bathroom if you was out on the river fishing? You'd go behind a tree. Uh -huh. We didn't have any trees. They were all gone. <laughs> so, you guess what we had to do? Things like that. Uh, we went, had the 6th and 7th grade one time. Question and answer period. And they asked some of the questions that's out of this world. One little boy had his hand up the whole time and we never got to him. He told a teacher, he said, they wouldn't talk to me. So she called me and she said, Frankie was really disheartened because he never got to ask a question. I said, have him write me a letter. I'll answer his question. So a couple of days later, I get a letter from little Frankie. <laughs> Frankie wrote it, wanted to know if we had a weight room, you know, lifting weights and stuff, <laughs> and what kind of cafeteria food we had. I answered him back in a letter, took it and gave it to the teacher to give to Frankie. He treasured that letter to this day. That soldier sent me a letter. That our students are missing out on a great part of what they need to know about this country and countries in the rest of the world. I mean, they have a wonderful opportunity with people like us to have living history right in front of them. And yet the schools and everybody that's associated with the schools seem to ignore that as a possibility. And it really, really concerns me and it occurs to me, and I think one of the states, and I don't know, maybe it's Minnesota, was able to, through an initiative, through their legislature and to the State Board of Education, require, instead of, you know, pushing math and other things so hard, to require more study of people, things like the Korean War and be active about inviting veterans and others into the school system. And to me, that may be the only way we're going to resolve some of the problems we're in today, is to try to get to those educators and get them to understand what we think they're missing out on. And if we're not able to do something like that, I'm afraid it's not going to I mean, it's going to get worse than what it is now, and you may completely shut out some of the opportunities. But I don't see the Vietnam veterans doing anything like this, and I don't see the Iraq-Afghanistan veterans. Maybe over time they will do it. World War II veterans didn't really do it. They did not make an effort to go in and teach the kids about what it takes to maintain the freedoms we're the ones that are trying to do that. And we're doing it because we think we've been largely ignored. They didn't know anything. Our own people, adults, didn't know about the Korean War. 
So they had no way to tell their children. So we're facing kind of an uphill battle unless we have a way to get into maybe the legislators. So in Texas, we have a paragraph about an inch long. One paragraph. One paragraph. That applies to Missouri as well. One paragraph. But, you know, the, the problem with that is World War II has one paragraph, too. Oh, is that right? Yeah, and Vietnam has a paragraph. The high school that we worked with the most, that we had the best luck with, they invited us in every year in the spring, April and May, and that's when they studied the Far East. That's how Korea got, when they talked about it, with that one little paragraph, but one of the teachers that we loved and worked with, her father was a Korean veteran. She said, I love the veterans and in my, my school, we're going to talk about it. Because I think Korean veterans are talking more now to their families and to their grandchildren about the Korean War. You know, if you looked at this 20 years ago or maybe even 10 years ago, Families didn't know about it. But because we're to the stage now that we want people to know and understand what we did, I think you'll find, I say most, at least many of the grandchildren will know, and I think they would appreciate something like you're talking about to be able to link through <clears throat> the internet to what you're doing. I think we have to tell the public, and also the young people, uh, what the Korean American associations in our country have done for us in the last many years, as well as what the people in Korea have done for themselves in the last 60 years. That's very important because no other society, no other country has ever done what the Korean people That's have done. That's exactly right. I think that needs to be a big part mm -hmm. of right. that whole story, too. Is what they've been able to do for themselves. We provided the environment, hopefully we provided the freedom and the form of government or help with that to be able to do it, but you and your people took advantage of that and made it what it is today. Uh, How many grandchildren do you have? I have eight grandchildren, ranging from 32 to eight. Yeah. One great-grandchild, six years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have three great grandchildren, but they're all just brand new, you know, six months old. And then 20s and 30s? Yeah. Uh -huh. I, my oldest grandson is 32. He's been to Korea. He knows about Korea. and I mean, he, he would probably be willing to participate he, be because a good one he to already knows about it and has a great interest in it. I think this is a wonderful opportunity. And what you're doing with the Digital Museum, I think will be the best thing that our Korean War veterans, the best way for us to provide this legacy concern that I've had of what happens when we're gone. I think what you're doing is probably the best thing that we've done.